Chris Collinsworth, kind enough to join us on short notice. Hi, Chris. Uh, how did you come to the conclusion Tillman should now be in the Hall of, uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame? Well, I've thought it for a long time, but uh, really after watching that feature the other day, I, I thought it even more. It was so well done. And, and the more you look at what this guy has done and what he's meant to sort of the – uh, the legacy of the NFL, if you will. I, I just think that as a representative of the game, I've been around it my whole life. There's nothing I would like more than to see this guy get in. I, I think that he represents something about all of us that we would like to have represented in the Hall of Fame. And if it's supposed to represent me in any way, shape, or form as a former player, those are the kind of guys I want to see in there. I mean, there are other contributors. There are other guys that commissioners, there are owners, there's, you know, uh, Ed Sables in there for making great contributions to the game, and they, and they all should be. Well, but I think when you look at this one, here's a guy that, that acted on what we were all feeling at that time. I mean, remember, this is right after 9-11, and here's a guy with a three-year, $3.6 million contract sitting in his hip pocket, and he said, you know what, I think it's a better idea for my country and for me to go serve and defend this country instead of playing in the National Football League and making all that money. And it was startling. I mean, it was, it was breathtaking in some ways that he decided to do that. And then when you add on top of that the fact that this guy made the ultimate sacrifice and gave his life uh, in doing that and representing not just our country, but in many ways the, the players of the National Football League, I, I just think it's a great statement of, of who we are as, as a people, as a country, and, and as players in the NFL. And I, I, just, I just don't know of anybody more deserving. He's Chris Collinsworth from Football Night in America. Uh, are you saying put him in as a contributor uh, or a true Hall of Famer? I don't really care. You know, I'll be honest with you. It doesn't make any difference to me. My guess is he's in the Hall of Fame right now. Uh, I haven't been to the Hall of Fame for a little while, so I haven't seen it. But I'm, I'm going to guess there's a nice shrine there uh, to Pat Tillman. Uh, but, but I think that as a player – uh, and you're going to tell me there are 230 or whatever players that are represented in the NFL. Uh, and every time we get in uh, the golf or after 9-11 or whatever, uh, every Super Bowl is wrapped in the American flag. Players come running on the field with the American flag. Uh, you know, we, we sort of wrap ourselves in it. Uh, is part of the National Football League, and we should. You know, we should. That's, that's, what, that's what the game and, and it, the size of the NFL allows us to do to make uh, people feel good about their country, and I'm proud to, to be a part of that with some of our broadcasts. Uh, but here's a guy who actually lived. Here's a guy who went beyond uh, giving that lip service or, or waving the flag or doing uh, anything of that nature. Here's a guy that gave up his life gave up money, gave up fame, gave up everything that we all that we all dream about and want to be and and as little kids we want to be rich, we want to be famous, we want to be in the National Football League. This guy gave up all that. Because uh, can you call a stronger calling uh, to to represent his nation uh, and and gave up his life doing that. I, I just you know, that's the guy. I, I honestly I think that Pat Tillman should be one of those guys that you walk in the room uh, and Peter King should go Pat Tillman, and everybody raise their hand, and he's in the Hall of Fame. And that's really how strongly I feel about it. Can you hold on for a second, Chris? If somebody really wants to get in touch with you. They're calling you while you're uh, on with us. So, uh, Fritzy, put Chris on hold. And I'm fine with contributors to the game. I am. I, I think it's great. I, I want. It, this is a museum. You know, I think we get caught up in how, you know, how important it is. It, it's still a museum. And if you want to put in Pat Tillman for contributions to the game, then great. I'm all for that. Chris, I was just saying I'm fine with a contributor to the game. Here's, here's the – I come to this. This is the bottom line with Pat Tillman. Would Pat Tillman want to see Pat Tillman in the Hall of Fame for his decision, a selfless decision to join the military? No, and that's exactly why he should be in there. That, that, that sort of selflessness – 
is exactly what we want the National Football League to be, and all too many times it's not. Too many times it's about me, 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 and it's about the money grab, and it's about let me do my end zone dance and, and let me draw attention to myself and all the things that, you know, it's part of the marketing of today's game and today's players, and I get it, and, I shoot, I did it myself. I, I understand it. But that, that's why this guy, to me, is so unique and so special and deserves special recognition above and beyond what he would even want you to do up for him. That's the difference. The difference is that this guy was different, and this guy deserves special recognition for that. And I know there have been other people that have represented our country in, in many ways, shapes, and forms. Uh, but in, in this day and age where we celebrate so much in the National Football League, uh, you know, I guarantee on draft day they're going to bring out 26 different people representing the armed services yep. from around the world and all the great contributions they've made. But one of ours, one of our very own, gave his life and gave up his money to go to Afghanistan because he thought it was the right thing to do, and he wouldn't want to be in the Hall of Fame because of it, and that's why he should be in. Yeah, at the time when, when uh, Pat died, I thought that the NFL could have done a great thing, and that is decorate just one 40-yard line, the number 40, which was his, just so you decorate it in, you know, with his military emblem or something that just designated something special around the NFL. But the NFL doesn't like to single out anybody you know, when Peyton Manning wanted to wear high-top shoes in honor of Johnny Unitas when he died, the NFL said no. So I, I just like the fact that we continue to have a conversation about it and we remember people. Uh, that's, that's why I would be all for it. I just don't know how the writers are or the NFL is in, in recognizing something like this. Well, you know, everybody can have their own opinion. Uh, there are wonderful people in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and I'm proud of all of them. I've been to many of the enshrinement ceremonies, and, but I just, I know this. If you inducted Pat Tillman into the Hall of Fame, that Hall of Fame ceremony would be unlike any that there That's has true. ever been. That's true. That there has ever been. And it would be a way for the NFL to not just give lip service to the way they feel about our country and the way that we feel about our military and the, the people who serve this country. It would be a way of honoring them and Pat in a way that they've never done. Have you talked to Peter King about this, of, of standing up for him and getting him on the ballot? Where does Peter King stand on this? On the complete opposite side <laughs> of the fence. You know, Peter, Peter and I haven't agreed on anything in 30 years. So. I, I, I'm actually thinking about changing my mind and saying there's no way that Pat Tillman deserves in the Hall of, to be in the Hall of Fame so that I could maybe get Peter King to vote the other uh, way. A little reverse psychology. Before I let you go, the, the draft being pushed back a couple of weeks, is that good for the draft or bad for the draft because – we keep churning out stories, rumors, innuendos, trades, guys falling, guys rising. Nobody's played a game here in about four months, Chris. I, I think it's fantastic for the NFL. Um, the NFL obviously is about generating interest on a year-round basis. Uh, I can remember doing talk radio in Cincinnati, and, and you know, free agency was such a big part of the, the hot stove league for the Cincinnati Reds and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it generates interest. But the draft is the number one off-season conversation point of any sport. I, I don't care which other sport you want to name. That's the number one thing that there is. So all this conversation, all the rumors, all the, the, the stuff that's going back and forth is, is really interesting. And to be honest, it gives me more time to study them. I mean, I've gone down probably 40 to 50 deep of the players that, that I like. And so I think that I have a little better feel of actually seeing the tape and knowing who these guys are than I ever have at, at this point. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. Who do you like the most? That, that there's no question this is the best player in the draft. Uh, I think Mac. <laughs> Khalil I, I, you know, Mac, I, huh? I, I, I like – I mean, there's so many – the quarterbacks uh, – they all look like good players. Would I be willing to bet my job on, on any of them at this point? I, I don't think that I would. Uh, and when you're talking about the number one overall pick, uh, Jadavian Clowney makes me just a little bit nervous. You know, I don't know that much about him personally, but I've seen him on tape, and 
you know, the number one overall pick, whether you like it or not, is always going to be sort of the signature part of your franchise. And if he's not the hardest working guy on the field, Sometimes those guys who aren't the number one overall pick on your football team kind of are looking and saying, well, he's not doing that. And so, you know, give me a J.J. Watt kind of guy is is that leader. And um, that part of it would make me a little nervous. Is he a freakish talent? He is a freakish talent. He really is. But I think uh, Khalil Mack is that same sort of freakish talent and and a guy that I've never seen take a playoff. We open up the season on Football Night in America in Seattle. Who were the Seahawks going to play that night? Mm, I, I, you know, I, if I have it right, I think San Francisco and Green Bay are probably the two that uh, most people are, are uh, rooting for in this situation. I'm going to guess. And I, I honestly have no idea. So this is a true – I'm going to guess Green Bay. That's a, that's a total guess. I said Green Bay or Dallas. Um, yeah, the only problem is you know, it's I, – I, I would prefer to do a Dallas game later on, you know, because Dallas is in so many ways an automatic draw. There's so much interest, and mm. Jerry has a way of stirring the pot down there. So – uh, my personal preference would be would be to save a Dallas game letter later and and do Green Bay in the opener. We're going to get other Green Bay games as well, but but that matchup seems to be the most intriguing one for me. You get that, that the great maybe the best quarterback in the game today and Aaron Rodgers going against arguably the best defense in the game today and those defensive backs. I think that matchup's pretty incredible. Appreciate your passion and joining us, Chris. Thank you. Uh, give my best to your wife. You got it. Thank you, Chris. Chris Collinsworth, Football Night in America.